Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'll, I'll have very few uh, brief remarks in a minute, but it's my honor to introduce from City Line Church in Jersey City, Bishop Joshua Rodriguez, who is also the chair of the New Jersey Puerto Rico Commission. Bishop. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Let us uh, bow our heads and pray. Father God, as we come before you today, we thank your God for your grace, your love, your protection that covers all of your sons and all of your daughters all, all over the world. But especially today, God, we reach out to you asking for your protection, for your restoration of the lives of our brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico. We thank you today for our governor and for his leadership. And, and we thank you, God, for all these state troopers who are going to be leaving in just a few moments and going on to Puerto Rico to help protect, to help maintain the stability in our great island. We pray, O oh God, that you would help the governor of Puerto Rico, Governor Vasquez, and all of her administration to utilize all these resources, human resources, financial resources, in order to improve the quality of life of our people who need their lives rebuilt. So we pray, O oh God, order, we pray protection, and we pray, O oh God, once again, for all these elected officials as well that are here so that together we can do our best to help add value to the lives of our brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico. We pray this, O oh God, in your most holy name. Amen. 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 Thanks, man. Thank you, Bishop. Um, I'm honored to be joined by a cavalcade of VIPs up here with me today, and you'll hear from a few of them, but I wanted to acknowledge the Attorney General Gabriel Graywall. Obviously, you know your Superintendent Colonel Pat Callahan and his extraordinary leadership team, First Lady Tammy Murphy to my right, and six extraordinary uh, legislators, Senators Ruiz, and you'll hear from Senator Ruiz in a few moments, Senator Ruiz, Senator Poe, Senator Cruz Perez, who came all the way up from, uh, from Camden, New Jersey, and you deserve an enormous amount of credit, Nilsa, for coming all the way, Assemblywomen uh, uh, Lopez, Keanu, and Chaparro. Uh, so to each of these six legislators, a particular tip of the cap. Um, I wanted to say very simply, God bless you, Best of luck, honor, duty, and fidelity have never been uh, more uh, in homage when, when we deploy, when you all deploy like this and represent our great state. Uh, Puerto Rico needs us and it needs you. Uh, this is a, an island that has been stricken uh, in, the, in the past couple of years uh, in an unimaginable way. Uh, and it, it is in desperate need. These are Americans who are in desperate need of help. Uh, and you're doing uh, just what they need and something that we're incredibly proud of. Uh, God bless you all. Please be safe. We know you'll new, do New Jersey proud uh, in the couple of weeks you're down there, and, and God knows they need us. Puerto Rico is, uh, is a place that is in the center of the New Jersey heart and soul. We have hundreds of thousands of folks of Puerto Rican descent in, uh, uh, here in New Jersey and their families. Uh, this is this is family to us, and what you're doing uh, makes all of us proud. So God bless you. With that, please help me welcome the Colonel of the State Police, Pat Callahan. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. I too will be brief. I thank the Governor and First Lady and, and the legislators that are here to say thank you as well. Uh, I had a chance to talk to you in the park a lot, and I think back to. Uh, our first deployment was really Katrina to New Orleans, New Orleans. I can't believe that was almost 15 years ago. But in the last few years, uh, we've had enlisted and civilian members of the state police go to Hawaii for volcanoes, to California for wildfires, to Houston for hurricanes, to Florida, to Georgia, to South Carolina, to the Virgin Islands, and to Puerto Rico. And here we are uh, about two years out from Hurricane Maria. And as we said to them when we left there, after being there for two months, that if you need us again, we're coming back. Uh, and here we are, and uh, it's an honor for us to go back. I think we will offer them a sense of calm and, um, and peace when they see this triangle on your right shoulder. I know it says NJ, but as I just told you, the places we've been around the United States for the last few years, uh, we have to kind of just say we raised our hand to help our brothers and sisters, regardless of what state that we're in. And this is just another example 
of me standing shoulder to shoulder with you and being so proud to call myself a Jersey Trooper. And I thank you all for uh, stepping up and going down there to take care of our brothers and sisters down there. So without any further ado, I will turn it over to the Attorney General of the State of New Jersey, General Gray Wall. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you to all the elected officials, the First Lady, everyone who's here. But most importantly, to thank you to each and every one of you who are going on this deployment. Our state troopers are the first to stand up in a moment of crisis and the last to stand aside. Whether that's responding to an incident like last month in Jersey City, or whether it's going to Puerto Rico in the wake of Hurricane Maria, or going to New Orleans in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. You do exceptional work, you keep people safe, and they look to you in times of crisis for calm, support, and help. And so thank you for answering this call to service. I wish you nothing but a safe journey and a safe return. Godspeed to all of you. And now it's my honor to introduce uh, Senator Ruiz to share a few remarks. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, uh, General uh, uh, Gubir. Um, I first want to take an opportunity to really thank uh, the governor and uh, his efforts. This is not the first time that New Jersey's Golden Dome is showing a true connection to the island of Puerto Rico. It has been consistent, it has been present, and it has been solid. And so thankful to an administration and, and, and the colonel as well for always being there. It's um, emotional for many of us to be on the phone, to call a family member, to hear the screams in the beginning. And I have to tell you, it is an enormous honor to have all of you go here from New Jersey. Because whether you're handing someone a water bottle or just saying hello, I have to tell you that you're gonna bring a sense of peace, which is the most critical thing that is needed right now. Resources, of course, rebuilding in the aftermath, but there is a, this level of unsteadiness and nervousness, whether you're in the mix of the Southern hemisphere of Puerto Rico or out on the West Coast or in, in San Juan on the main island, because you just don't know when it's going to happen again. For the Puerto Ricanos in the room and for those who may be going out there for the first time, there's a little frog, it's called the coqui, and it's only found in Puerto Rico and it only sings in Puerto Rico. If you take it off the island, it doesn't sing anymore. But that's the resiliency. When you hear it in the nighttime, remember this, it sounds loud and it's melodic. But if you ever get a glimpse of what it is, it is the tiniest tree frog you can ever imagine. The Boricua spirit is precisely that. We get knocked down and we get up and we get stronger and it is amazing that we have New Jersey State Troopers to allow us to amass that strength to get back up. Thank you for the work that you do here. Thank you for the work that you've done on the island and thank you for the service that you do day in and day out and I'm just so proud to be part of this effort. Gracias que Dios te con todos ustedes. Um, um, sumamente orgullosa a compartir estos momentos con ustedes, pero más importante a darle las gracias y que estén seguros y que Dios los bendiga a todos. I, I, I love everything you do, minus if you pull me over on the turnpike. <laughs> I figured I'd lend some levity to all of this, but I have to tell you on behalf of all of the Puerto Rican legislators here, it is just an honor to see all of you board a plane and sacrifice even more than what you do here in the state of New Jersey to tell Puerto Ricanos that you, New Jersey is presente, we recognize you, and to be just a juxtaposition to what the federal government is doing because we believe in people, so thank you. Thank you, Fritz. We will. I'm going to come out and shake everyone's hand here. Good luck, everyone. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Everyone Your first last name is Patrick Callahan, C A L L A H A N. Okay, so tell us how this first came about, the request to deploy. We, uh, that emergency management assistance compact, uh, it's been in place. It's, uh, in the wake, I think of back to Sandy when we had troopers from all over the country come help us. 
uh, it's a give and take. Uh, we knew with the series of earthquakes that we were keeping an eye on Puerto Rico to see if they'd ask for help, whether that was from law enforcement, whether that was urban search and rescue. And sure enough, a few days ago, they put out the EMAC request, and we were the, the first ones to respond and the first ones to be on the ground down there. So it's uh, an honor for us to do that. But if you talk about what they're going to be doing there, what authority they have on the ground? They actually get, the, when they get there, there's a swearing-in ceremony. They do get deputized. That's one thing that we make sure that they have full police powers when they are there. They will be doing uh, not only security uh, for those 2,000 or so residents in that tent city. They will also be, like last time, directing traffic uh, where there's areas where there's no power and they want to make sure that the motoring public is also safe. So a combination of both traffic and, and patrol. What have you heard back from the advance team uh, of priorities or their initial impressions? Actually, compared to last time, I think there's fewer challenges than what we faced in Hurricane Maria. Uh, the difference is this time we don't have our own vehicles. We have rental cars, which was a logistical, uh, made a lot, a lot of things easier for us. But we do have our state police decals on the side of those rental cars so people know that it's us down there. Um, but there are the advance team, uh, Major Ryan's the incident commander, and I've talked to him this morning and every day since he's been down there. The 13 other troopers arrived this morning, and these 37 will make it a total of 57 down there on this deployment. What about the relationship between New Jersey and Puerto Rico? Why are you guys... You know what? I don't know. It's, as the governor said, it's almost like a, a, a sister uh, island for us. Uh, I think in the wake of Hurricane Maria, um, that bond was created just... Uh, they, as Senator Ruiz said, they just that sense of calm and stability, which is not there, not from infrastructure, not from some of the struggles they've had. Uh, so if we can bring just a little bit of that normalcy, which is what recovery is all about, about getting back to normal, then uh, we're honored and, and humbled to do it. Any concerns about the safety of the troopers? Actually, I am a little bit this time with the amount of aftershocks and the magnitude of those. Uh, I worry about them. I obviously told them to look out for one another, but... Uh, with the amount of uh, aftershocks down there, the structures that they'll be in and around does all, you know, does make me sleep with one eye open, to be honest with you. But I do that generally anyway with 3,000 troopers that work with me. <laughs> what, what do you hope uh, Puerto Ricans learn about New Jersey and New Jerseyans when they see that patch, like you said, the NJ? You know, I think it's a daily, uh, there's so many thousands of positive interactions, and sometimes that narrative or story doesn't get told. As I always, when I'm with the troopers, it's, it's about treating people with compassion. And this is just another opportunity for us to do that uh, and to let people know that, uh, that we're out of uniform more than we're in it and we're little league coaches and we're Sunday school teachers and we're mothers and fathers so uh, I think what they'll take away is that the New Jersey State Police and then hopefully all of law enforcement is viewed with a little bit more compassion uh, from this deployment. Uh, sir, uh, another question that a lot of residents have is the cost and reimbursement. Can you, uh, talk to we do get reimbursed by the federal government. It's a combination of both Puerto Rico and FEMA uh, through this agreement. Um, and that's all part of that EMAC uh, process. And again, it's a two-way street. We've been to a lot of places in the last few years, but again, in the wake of Sandy, we had troopers from all over the country come and help us out when, uh, when we were devastated by that. Is there a specific budget for this mission? Uh, this one, I think, is just over, depending upon how long it goes. Right now, it's at two weeks. It may cost upwards of a, approximately about a million dollars is what we had put out there on the, you know, to Puerto Rico and FEMA. So it'll probably hover around a million million dollar mark. Appreciate it. All right. What do you what pride do you feel? What do you feel when you see these thirty seven guys in front of you about to head out? I, I feel incredible pride. I mean I it's what we know here in New Jersey that our troopers stand up, that they're the first to run to danger, first to help people, then the last ones to stand aside. I saw it firsthand when I was in Jersey City in the wake of the shootings last month. Uh, we saw it in the wake of Hurricane Maria, and we're seeing it again uh, this evening as these troopers deploy to Puerto Rico uh, to help residents who really need it right now and it's not the first time we've been there and, and we'll be there as long as it takes. Can you address the issue, I just asked this before as well, but the issue of safety and their legal authority down there? Yeah, I mean I think between our uh, mutual assistance agreements uh, all that has been spelled out and it's not our first time doing this and so uh, we understand the protocols, we understand the police powers we have and, and the troopers are briefed up and trained on all of that. And so, you know, our main concern is ensuring the safety of the residents in Puerto Rico, in the affected areas, and the security of the camps uh, where they'll be providing, uh, you know, protective uh, support. So, uh, Is there somebody, uh, representatives from your office as far as 
being there with them to advise them? We don't have deputy attorneys general down there, but we're always available to provide guidance to the state police. We represent the, the division of state police, and if there are any questions, uh, we'll provide appropriate guidance. Yeah, the last thing is, you know, I hate to, just so many people ask, you know, why should they go? You know, uh, these are Jersey troopers. I know it's explained here, but if you had a group of New Jersey residents, citizens, what, what would you say to them about why this is important? Well, it's important because it's mutual assistance. Mutual assistance is the corner of, uh, cornerstone of law enforcement uh, emergency response. These are mutual assistance agreements that we have uh, in place. So when New Jersey needs help, other states respond. When, when other states and, and, and the residents of Puerto Rico need help, we respond. And, and so this is how uh, we force multiply and, and help each other out. And this is the cornerstone of being an American, to help out a fellow American in their time of need. And so that's what we're doing today. All right, thanks, thanks guys. Very much. Good, appreciate it.